Hey, hey, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chelsea, and today I am going to be talking about my um, experience with egg retrieval as part of my IVF cycle, which happened this time last year. Um, we did document that. My husband and I documented that. We vlogged the whole thing, so you can go back. I have an IVF playlist. You can go watch that whole process and the actual egg retrieval day, but I wanted to just share with you my experience as far as recovery and what to expect um, because when I was about to do my egg retrieval, I remember being really nervous. Um, and also the biggest thing is I get asked so often what, like, what to expect with um, egg retrieval and especially with taking time off work and all that kind of stuff. I, I think that's probably the number one question I get asked through my Instagram. So I thought it would be a good video to just dedicate all to my egg retrieval um, experience. And this is also a collaboration with Simply Gina here on YouTube. I found her when I was in the middle of my IVF cycle last year um, because I was just searching for, you know, more support and just more um, information out there as to what to expect. And um, I found her channel and I really enjoyed watching her over the past year because she does a lot of like what I eat in a day videos and I really like those. So be sure to check her out because she's going to be doing, um, giving her thoughts about her own egg retrieval experiences because she's actually had multiple egg retrievals. Um, and so she, I thought she would be a good one to collab with because she, you know, has had different experiences than I've had. Um, so that way, those of you who are going through an egg retrieval or about to go through an egg retrieval can get more um, ideas as to what to expect. So anyway, if you are interested in all of that, go ahead and keep watching. Okay, so jumping right into it. Um, so if you're familiar with the IVF process, you start with stims and you're on these stimming medications that help your ovaries produce a lot of eggs, follicles, whatever. Um, and on egg retrieval day, they go in, um, usually you're under anesthesia, just like I think general anesthesia is what they call it. Um, although I have heard that some people do it without anesthesia, but I think that's pretty rare. But anyway, for me, I was under anesthesia. I don't remember anything as far as the actual pr procedure goes. Um, for us, we, um, before egg retrieval, you know, I was feeling very, very heavy in my, oh, in my abdomen and my ovaries and I was just ready to get them out. However, I was really nervous about the procedure. Like, I don't know why I was just so nervous. I had read horror stories of people getting OHSS and people um, like just throwing up after the procedure and being in terrible pain. So that's kind of what I was expecting. I was sort of expecting the worst. I was really nervous about it. So I was feeling really heavy. I was worried maybe I was overstimulating from all the medications. Um, before the procedure, um, on our last appointment before the egg retrieval, I was told that I had about 36 follicles, which is a lot, um, that they could see. Not all were going to produce a mature egg, but they could see about 36 forming. So that was a lot. So I was a little worried about that, but they weren't too worried about it. So I was like, okay, let's do this. So I triggered um, with my H the shot they give you to trigger so that you know, 36 hours after that, you'll ovulate, which is right that the exact time that they want to do the, the egg retrieval procedure. So I triggered on a Friday night around 10 p.m., I think, maybe 8 p.m., I don't remember exactly, but I went in, our egg retrieval procedure was at 8 a.m. on Sunday, so I triggered on a Friday night. And then 36 hours later, we did our procedure. They asked us to be at the clinic 
half hour before the procedure and just to wear comfy clothes, no makeup. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all the instruction they gave me. No makeup and just wear something comfortable. And I think they told me to wear warm socks. And I think that's just to keep myself warm through the procedure. So uh, once we got in and settled, Eric was able to come in with me while I um, got ready for the procedure. And then once I was put under anesthesia, um, he had to leave. But I actually don't remember him leaving. So he, I laid down on the table after I dressed in my gown and um, the anesthesiologist, like the hardest part of the procedure honestly was the little prick from the anesthesiologist um, to give me, I, I guess an IV. I don't really remember because it was so, like I was so out of it, but um, he gave me the IV, um, which kind of instantly started to relax me a little bit. Um, and then I think once they put the anesthesia, is that what it's called? I don't know, <laughs> the general anesthetic into the IV, that's when you're just like out. And I remember being like, I'm not gonna fall asleep. I'm gonna, like, it's not gonna happen to me. I don't know why. But um, I was just laying there and then all of a sudden, like they woke me up and I was like, are you sure you finished the procedure? Like, did you really do it? Because I don't remember ever falling asleep. Um, but anyway, I woke up and I somewhat remember them wheeling me into a room and putting me in a recliner, kind of. But it was all very blurry. So I basically woke up in a recliner with a heating pad on. The procedure was all but like 20 minutes maybe. Um, and so I just laid in a recliner. <clears throat> I didn't really have a lot of pain. I um, felt a little bit crampy, like menstrual cramps, that type of crampy. Um, but I had a heating pad on, which felt nice, and I was just super relaxed. Eric came into the room and sat with me while we waited for the doctor. And I just remember feeling really, really good and being so relieved that I wasn't in any kind of like pain, you know. It's a little uncomfortable, but I wasn't in any, any pain. Um, I just remember thinking, wow, that was a really good nap. Did you enjoy it? Did. You enjoyed it, huh? I have no idea. Like, I literally, I don't know what just happened. Like, I... I don't think you're gonna remember this conversation later. <laughs> no, I like, he just put a blood pressure thing on me and then I was so relaxed. Yeah, so I was very relieved that my recovery seemed to be, at that moment, seemed to be very easy. So um, then the doctor came in and told us, you know, how many eggs were retrieved and what kind of our next steps were after that and then kind of instructions on how to recover. Um, so we went home, I slept for probably the rest of the day and um, then, you know, just took it really easy that night. By that night I was totally normal. I remember feeling crampy, just like menstrual cramps, but nothing like, but not bad menstrual cramps, just, you know, just kind of crampy. It's the night of egg retrieval and I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I'm thinking maybe I might take some ibuprofen because I am feeling crampier and crampier as the day goes on. And I think before bed I might take, I think I took two today, is that how much you gave me? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, take, I took two, but I'm thinking I might take like a good three or four before I go to bed just so that I can sleep well. Um, but overall, yeah, it's been a pretty easy day, I guess. Um, I'm trying to make sure to eat a lot of protein, drink a lot of water and stuff. As of right now, I'm feeling pretty dang good considering I thought I would be like so out of it and just feeling a lot of pain today. I'm really happy I'm doing well. Yeah. Yeah. I remember feeling kind of bloated, um, but yeah, Eric took good care of me, just rested, and... It wasn't bad at all that first day. Um, and then I decided, so that was on a Sunday, so then the next day was a Monday and I did plan to take that day off um, for sure. And then I was like, I think I'll probably take Tuesday off as well. My work is very, very easy going when it comes to getting time off. I can do a lot of my work from home, 
most of it actually. So it was very easy for me to take work off, but because this is such a common question I get asked, I'm gonna say that you should plan on at least two days. So if you're um, post egg retrieval, so if your egg retrieval is like me on a Sunday, then you wouldn't have to take that day off. But if, you're, if your egg retrieval was on a Monday, I would say take Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off for sure. Um, because here's the thing, like, even though my recovery felt like, I mean, the whole procedure felt like a breeze, um, honestly, the next day, I remember feeling even more bloated and very uncomfortable, um, and I really just had to rest and sleep all day. That is a huge key for um, my recovery was just sleeping, and I felt like if I could just sleep it off, then like the more I slept and rested, the better I would feel. So if you can take a good two days post egg retrieval off, I would, and just dedicate it to sleeping. Don't do anything um, like that you don't need to do. I mean, I was able to get up, make, you know, make a bowl of cereal or something, but for the most part, Eric was bringing me food and taking care of me. And I was drinking a ton of water and a ton of Gatorade and coconut water and some juice. I was just drinking, drinking, drinking and sleeping. Those are like the two things I would say helped my recovery the most. Um, I was, just so surprised at how bloated I still felt and how just uncomfortable that feeling was. I wasn't really in pain. It was just just so much discomfort. I just didn't think I just didn't think I would be that bloated post egg retrieval. But yeah, it was just pretty uncomfortable. Um, I would say it took me about a week before I, every day felt like I was getting better, um, but it was about a week post egg retrieval that I felt like I was like my physically feeling more like myself again. Okay, so for us, we did a frozen embryo transfer. I haven't ever experienced a fresh embryo transfer. That's when um, you do the tr embryo transfer about five days after um, your egg retrieval, um, which for me, I always just think that is just crazy because I think of how I was feeling five days post egg retrieval and that's just a lot on your body. And then you have to start the progesterone and oil injections. I think the day of your egg retrieval, if you're gonna do a fresh transfer, if that's part of your protocol, the progesterone and oil injections. And so it's a lot. Um, so honestly, I don't know. I feel like if I were to have done a fresh embryo transfer, I probably would have taken just a whole week off um, or maybe taken like three days off, gone back to work for a couple days or maybe just a day. And then at my clinic, they do bed rest. Um, my doctor suggests bed rest after your transfer. And so I would have had to take another two days post transfer off just for bed rest. So it's a lot for your body to go through and um, I know there's differing op opinions um, on whether you should do fresh transfer or frozen transfer, but um, I had always just said I wanted to do a frozen transfer because it would give me that time to recover. We also did PGS testing, so we had to do frozen embryo transfer, but I just feel like it would, if you do a frozen embryo transfer, it's going to give you that time to recover um, because here's the thing, if you do a fresh embryo transfer, you not only, so five days before that, you're doing the, the egg retrieval, which is a, a, a procedure that's a lot on your body. And then you do the transfer. And then if you get pregnant, it's like, whoa, that's a lot on your body. And then you're pregnant for nine months and pregnancy is a lot on your body too. So I was so glad that we did the frozen embryo transfer to just really give myself, um, just give us the opportunity to have a break for my body to fully recover and relax and um, go back to a somewhat normal state before then um, starting all the frozen embryo transfer medications and doing that part of the process. And I have a whole video where I talk about the FET process that we went through. Um, and so I can link that down below for you guys. Um, yeah, so that's 
pretty much those are my thoughts with egg retrieval um, another part of the egg retrieval process like as far as like recovery during that week of recovery you will be getting your updates as far as you know how many eggs they retrieved how many um, fertilized how many embryos you have you know how many make it to day five or if you have to do a day three transfer you know it's just there's a lot going on that week and so that's why I say just really if you can just take as much time off of work as you possibly can with a minimum of two days after the egg retrieval because I mean that's what I would plan um, if I were you because it's just so much and honestly you need to just let your body relax and rest because it is a stressful time I think waiting for your embryo updates and the fertilization report and all that kind of stuff can be very stressful um, so yeah just take your time really baby yourself I always tell people just baby yourself because it's a lot it's a lot to go through and some people are tough and can do it all with a breeze but for me it was kind of it was kind of stressful um, physically emotionally more so than I thought um, in some ways so anyway those are all my thoughts um, if you guys have done an egg retrieval I would love to hear a bit about your experience in the comments below so that this community can benefit from you know getting a lot of different perspectives on what their what they can expect when it comes to an egg retrieval and then for sure check out Gina's channel um, she'll be posting today as well and I will link her video below um, about her experiences. So that is it for today, you guys. Thank you so much as always for tuning in and watching my videos. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this content, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, be sure to subscribe. I would love to have you part of, as part of this tribe. And if you're from Gina's channel, hello, welcome. And I hope you will subscribe and join us. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye. Thank you.